みなさん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. <laughs>、um, this is a really nice way to start my podcast, but I have definitely caught a cold. <laughs> um, my first daughter came home from kindergarten the other day with a、uh, fever, which already recovered on that day she came home, actually. You know, she's young. But、uh, definitely, Harumi and I have caught the same one. Our nose are stuffed. Our,、um, we are not coughing that much, but our throats are a little bit sore. And we don't have a fever, but we definitely feel really tired. <laughs> so, this is, you know, the family stuff. It happens every time. It happens anywhere around the world, right? Your kids start going to school, start going to kindergarten, and they bring, bring they catch a cold, and your family all gets it, you know. It's just like how we do with the flu and everything. We are doing the typical family stuff here. <laughs> so, I'm not really sure if I'll be able to talk properly. I. I'm、pretty sure, come to think of it, I usually don't talk properly in the first place because of lack of sleep. But, anyways, today, today I'm sorry, I'm really, really sorry, but I have to talk a little bit about something that I'm a little bit frustrated、um, something that I am here to stand and fight for. But I do have to kind of introduce this, I want to introduce this to you because, as a real life example of what the world of Japanese traditional culture is like right now. So,、uh, the story actually is about my wife's、um, Japanese traditional dancing sensei. So, we say Nihon Buyo in Japanese, Japanese traditional dancing. So, Harumi sensei, first of all, is very, very famous. She has been on, of course, all around the world to do dancing. She Has been used in Japanese commercials on instructors for how to stand beautifully, move beautifully for、um, uh, famous celebrities, you know, that will go on commercials, dramas, and such. And of course, her just her skills of dancing is amazing. She has been、uh, dancing since she was two years old because her family has been doing it.、Uh, she has been doing it for more than no one knows her age because we were all, of course, not able to ask. But、um, in one of her stories on Instagram, she was saying that she's been dancing since、um, two years old. And she posted a picture of herself that looks like she's maybe in,、um, around six, seven years old. And she said that she's been dancing for almost 40 years now. So she does not, absolutely does not look like it. It might mean that she's more older than 40. Anyways, it's certain that she's been. Been dancing for more than 35 to 40 years, and that her, that her family has been doing it too. Now, what I want to talk about with you today is that、um, the sensei, Harumi sensei, her name is Shizuki sensei, by the way, Shizuki, Shizuki sensei. Shizuki sensei is a rather open minded person, open minded person. So, she, of course, as I just mentioned earlier, she does Instagram, she actually does TikTok too,、um, introducing some short,、uh, what should I say, you know, like the popular dances. Um, on TikTok, right? You know, there's always a trend of dances on TikTok, and she makes like the Japanese traditional dancing version of it. You know, of course, there's uh, certain uh, rules in Japanese traditional dancing, like if you're going to be facing this way, your body your, your waist needs to twist this way. Like, like any form of dance has certain、um, fixed set of rules for moving your body and controlling your fingertips and stuff like that, right? So she makes, you know, like a、uh, Japanese traditional dancing version of it.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, so, yeah, she challenges these things. You know, she dances to modern music too. And、uh, sometimes she goofs around, you know, in,、um, in oh, what should I say, funny costumes and stuff like that. And basically, her concept is simply to enjoy Japanese traditional dancing. Dancing is something, no matter what the roots are, it's for you to enjoy it, right? Dancing is for you to enjoy it. Even back in the time when, you know, like mainly it was、uh, Maiko doing it at the Ozashiki, you know, time room dinner parties. It was for the guests to enjoy the dancing, right? So, if the world has changed, it's about time we change how we enjoy dancing or watching dancing, too, right? But here comes the main topic here.、Um, on the post that she,、uh, she makes on Instagram, there is, this, there is this person who has been writing comments.、Uh, I have it in my hands right now on my,、uh, my phone, so let me re- try to read it here. Uh, there's three comments、uh, that she's written. And、uh, by the way, she's a sensei. The、um, this Harumi sensei is one of the strongest women you can imagine. So、uh, she introduced these comments, which were on her posts in her stories. 
And she also said that, wow, um, thank you very much for taking the time to send me this comment here, but I'm actually worried about how your mental situation is, your condition is, sorry. And let's take a look at the comments here. Uh, one comment says, um, please don't spread your weird dance. Uh, second comment, I don't know which uh, Yuha style you belong to, but don't spread this very weird dance. Third one, please don't call yourself a Japanese traditional dancer. Uh, you're an embarrassment to Japan. Um, I, I wouldn't understand it if you call yourself an entertainer, but calling yourself a Japanese traditional dancer is very rude to the other Japanese traditional dancers in Japan. Now, uh, there's a lot of things I would love to say, but I'm, I'm trying try to stay calm as much as possible, trying not, um, not to be too <laughs> what aggressive, what attacking, you know, stuff like that. But you get my my point, right? I mean, who the heck are you to tell a sensei who has been learning for more than 35 years, teaching for more than 20 years, who the heck are you to tell her? Um, what Japanese traditional dancing is or what a Japanese traditional da dancing sensei is supposed to be. But this, guys, is just a tip of an iceberg. Seriously. Um, th this kind of stuff, of course, happens to me as well. Um, I, I usually don't, I, like, share or I don't even see the Japanese comments. Um, you know, again, I'm a highly sensitive person at HSP, right? So when I see comments in English, of course they hurt me too sometimes, but it's much, much better because the Shogo personality comes out. And when Shogo personality comes out, I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, I, what I think is useful to advance my channel, to make my content better, thank you very much for taking the time to do that. But if it's something that's just purely here to attack me or to make that person sound more important using my platform, I'm just gonna say, ha ha, thank you so much for your time. Um, this is the block button I have here, so goodbye. <laughs> so I'm completely different when I now use two different languages, you know? And so when I, I'm sorry, my writing nose. Um, so, when I see these comments in Japanese, I'm just hurt too much, so I usually just tend to not, not look at it at all, but I receive these kind of comments too. And these are the kind of people who really, really um, just get in the way of, you know, the involvement of um, advancement of Japanese traditional culture. I'm like, think about it. Um, like, for example, if there was an athlete in some kind of sport, it could be, well, let's say basketball, and that, that athlete is really, really good at playing basketball. Uh, he or she scores a lot. And he or she has been dedicating their whole lives to doing basketball. And they do a really special way of, I don't know, you know, running through the court, you know, or uh, getting a score, you know, shooting a ball. They, they've uh, invented a completely new tactic to fight a game, for example. And then someone comes up to them and tells them, that's not what basketball is or you know that's not what a basketball player should be like that kind of stuff or it could be music for example a, um, a guitarist uh, thinks up of a new way to play the guitar and creates completely new music which everyone is fully enjoying everyone is fully enjoying that's the important part that person has been playing the guitar for all of his life and also there's tons of people supporting his or her music and then someone comes up to them and tells you're an embarrassment to all the guitarists around the world wouldn't that sound really weird but in the world of japanese traditional culture this happens it's a daily day-to-day -day stuff it happens every day and it comes from the very weird belief that Japanese traditional culture is really important, it's so much more important than all of the culture around the world, or no, this is how it's not, it's not, this, this is not how it's supposed to be. Like, there is no, this is how it's supposed to be. Who made that? Who are you to decide what a culture is supposed to be, right? Japanese traditional culture, it could be anything. It could be tea ceremony, it could be, the katana, it could be martial arts, you know, budo martial arts, it could be dance, music, 
everything in Japan, all these things have existed for more than at least 100 years. Longest it could go, could go 600, 700 years in Japanese history. It has absolutely changed many, many times through the few centuries of history. And look at today. It's very, very different from the Edo period, from the Taisho period, Showa period. You can understand that the situation is completely different, but you don't want a culture to change. You are saying, you're going up to a professional. Shizuki sensei, now she's a very confident and strong woman that I respect so much as my wife's sensei. I'm really glad that she was such a strong woman because there are people who get hurt, of course, there are some people who just simply get too hurt, too stressed, too depressed, that they will stop doing the things that they're doing, even though there are hundreds and thousands, ten thousands of people enjoying what they're doing. And we need people today to involve Japanese traditional culture to fit this modern world, because otherwise, we will not be able to enjoy it in the future. It's going to disappear. We can see it. I can, I can definitely see it happening. You know, the people who go up on the internet, it could, it could not be, it could be something that's um, unrelated to Japanese traditional culture too. People who go up and discourage people by writing words on the internet. They need to understand their responsibility, how much harm they're doing to other people and the change that could, the positive change that could possibly happen in this world. They need to be really they need to understand much, much more how much harm they're doing to the whole society of this world. One negative comment could stop a man or woman from doing something that they love. And that person, if he or she could, had been going on, that person could have benefited 10,000, 100,000 people, even a million people in the future. And just a few comments could de destroy that. It could happen. And it's very, very... For me, it's um, really sad that in real life, in, in person, one person's opinion would not change everything. But on the internet, you know, on the internet with your names hidden, you know, it looks like everyone's, you know, comments or opinions are equal, right? In real life, you would listen to your friends maybe, but you wouldn't listen to a stranger on the streets, right? And that's a good thing because the stranger doesn't actually know who you are. So you shouldn't listen to that person. But on the internet, everyone looks equal. And that, of course, has its benefits. But when it's used in this way, as we've been talking about today, it has a lot of, it could do a lot of harm. Yeah. And once again, I really wanted to say that uh, I respect Jesus Sensei so much for stand up to these trolls. And I want to also say again that I am not going to be changing the direction of my life just because these people have nothing to do but go on the internet and attack people for stuff that they don't even do. If this woman, obviously a woman by the way, the account, the account name is a woman and she says on her account page that she has two kids, who said these things that she's gonna say if this person was as famous as she's gonna say or was putting as much effort into japanese traditional dancing as much as she's gonna say or it has many students as she's gonna say working so hard for to preserve and involve the culture then let's have a um a flat debate here right let's talk about the things what do you not like about she's gonna say why is she doing it let's have a conversation Finally, that's the point where we can have a conversation, still not a one-side attack kind of stuff. Obviously, that's not what adults should do, right? At least what I think a mature adult should do. It, that's not one of the things that, you know, that we should be doing. So I really want to say again that I myself will never let anyone who I don't even know, who doesn't even understand what I'm doing, to decide which way I'm going. Yeah. It's really important for a long time I have been haunted myself that I need to listen to all the opinions on the internet. No, no, that's impossible. That's impossible because in real life you wouldn't do that either, right? So I wanted to confirm with you once again, looking at what uh, Shizuki Sensei uh, has experienced and her responses to it really gave me a lot of confidence and also of course made me to see that there is of course such a problem. but. 
I have changed. I have changed. I'm starting to get even more ready to fight in the world of the traditional culture in Japan and also fight as a influencer, so-called influencer and a person who is doing YouTube. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. So I always say at the end of these podcasts, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers dreams come true. So I know there's a lot of people uh, studying Japanese, willing to come to Japan to travel, study or work, or even train in a traditional culture and such. However, I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future because we're facing a lot of social problems, we are losing our traditional culture, and the younger generations who are supposed to be carrying on the good things about Japan are dying because of all the social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life to try to make Japan a better place. I want to try to solve the social problems, preserve and evolve traditional culture, and also help out the younger generations so they can have a better future. This preserve and evolve traditional culture. I always say this, but again, this is linked to what I've talked about today. Yep. And to do that, and to do all of these things, the nearest goal I have right now is to achieve 2 million subscribers by January 2023 on my main channel. So all your likes and comments will help to boost my videos to new viewers who have never seen my channel before. So it'd be great if you could help me out. All right. Everyone, thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.